kid and you're asking like, what do we do about? Is you sign a contract with someone? So real quick, before you did that, did you? More than 30 years. I got my real estate license in the um, And your your origin story. Is that he uh, he made an age joke the last time we were. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna use that kooka. You know, I'm a little more strict with what I'm I'm looking at. Uh, and that's the thing. Like, it's also barrier barrier to entry. You know, Absolutely. barrier to entry is uh, is a lot lower in certain areas. There are certain areas of Detroit that pff, they're outrageously expensive. They're more expensive than the suburbs. Well, you know, that's but, true. Yes. <laughs> Boston Edison is one of them, you know. Oh, really? Uh, that's probably the highest. Is okay. I mean, you, you got four or five hundred thousand dollar houses, you know, six hundred thousand dollar houses in Boston Edison. Oh, absolutely. You know? Yep. And then you know, Virginia Park, you're you're still in in, in the you know two or three three hundred thousand dollars. You're at least a hundred thousand dollars for a for a house that needs a hundred thousand dollars worth of work. Absolutely. You know? So. Um, but you know, the good thing is, is your ROI on that because the ones in Virginia park are probably, uh, you get a higher return because either there are duplex, so you can get, you can charge a lot more, you know, things like that. So yeah, you can, yeah, but, uh, you know, with that, what areas of Detroit do you prefer? What areas I prefer, um, the living ways and seven mile area is a great area to invest. Um, okay. I have invested over in um, Brightmore. Okay. You know, they're going to be building up soon. Um, hopefully sometime soon. And so, I would so say you like, you like Brightmore, huh? <laughs> yes. It's much, okay. you know, yes. I mean, I, I, I know a lot of investors who stay away from Brightmore, so you know, <laughs> I, I I never come across somebody who likes Brightmore. So. I'm over here now. Okay, awesome. I'm in Brightmore now. A, yes. I have another wholesaler friend of mine, uh, Todd Chun. He has a T-shirt that says "Straight Out of Brightmore" because he's from Brightmore. So yes, I know yeah. Todd. <laughs> so I think it's hilarious, but uh, most definitely, I think it's you know the barrier to entry. Um, over in Brightmoor is a lot less, um, yes. but it, I'm hoping the city is going to put some money into it. Yeah, they're talking um, about it. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, and, and that, that what I found is the key is wherever you see the city of Detroit putting money into, that's where you want to go. Abs absolutely. Okay. absolutely. So if you go to these city meetings and you say, okay, next year we're going to put a million, two million dollars into this neighborhood, buy it before they do that. And now you're going to get the appreciation. You know? Absolutely. So, and just ride the wave. If you're a buy and hold investor, just ride that wave. So, uh, that's a little tidbit, by the way. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's the truth. Yeah. Because yeah. we had uh, ba Bagley was really up and coming. And yes. They got, they got really, you know, hit. And then, they decided to go, um, Detroit decided to put more money into Fitzgerald. So now, now Fitzgerald is starting to come up a little bit more because of that. So yeah, Bagney is a great area to invest. That's what some of my homes were originally before I lost them in foreclosure. And that was a great mm -hmm. area. I had my, um, the house I was living in was on Prairie Street. I had a really nice, um, sturdy four bedroom brick with a garage. Really, really nice. Yeah. But yeah, I, think I grew like up at 600 square footage. They sold it for $30,000. Yeah, oh my God. Yeah, yes. I grew up right over by there actually. So I okay. went to Ferndale High School. Um, I grew up at Seven Mile Woodward. So, okay. Or sorry, no, not Seven Mile, Eight Mile Woodward. <laughs> so, okay. right in Ferndale. So, um, so I know that area actually pretty well <laughs> because of yes, that. Yes, it's a great area to invest. Like, that's the Bagley area. Yep. Yes. Yep. So um, now, what do you what do you consider like your what's your worst deal that you've had in the past? 
and then give me your best deal. <sighs> My worst deal I had in the past. <clears throat> and you could even still own it now. That's perfectly fine too. <laughs> so. Uh, you know, my worst deal was purchasing the property. Um, <clears throat> my worst deal was I had a house on Drexel Street and I was renting that property. Um, I was going to purchase the property, but then they went up probably like an extra twenty or thirty thousand dollars. OK. And um, so I walked away from that property and then I ended up moving from there because I was renting the downstairs and upstairs for like six years. And then at the time, that might have been in 2005 or six, maybe. And then I moved on the west side and, and bought another two unit, which was over on Monica and which is the next block over from Oakland. Mm -hmm. um, so I ended up saving twelve hundred dollars um, because I ended up buying that house you know cash and then you know and, yep. and um put some work into it and then at okay. one point before the pandemic though um that was like a really money maker i could put seven people in their home for what i do wow yes okay mm -hmm. so how was that your worst deal is just buying that property or um as far as buying it it was a it, that was a good deal um, one of the deals I did buy was off of Seven Mile, I want to say Westbrook, kind of the area okay. down there now, kind of like Beirut. I, it kind of looked um, worse than the Blightmore or Brightmore area, I should say. Um, yeah. So that was kind of my worst deal because the foundation issue. So I realized now because I'm more savvy that yep. you got to look at the foundation. I think I, I, I purchased a home for like $700. Oh, wow. Okay. So yes, it was a great deal for us purchasing it, but then, you know, it sat for a while, and then the foundation was bad because because it was so um, cheap, I should say. Yep. I didn't get an inspection, so it wasn't really worth my while. So I don't have that mm -hmm. particular home now. So that was like the worst deal. Okay. So, did you fix that up at all, or did you just I didn't, get rid of it? No, um, I I got rid of it. Got it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, now, what's your best deal? My best deal? Yeah. I would say possibly my primary home. Um, so when I lost the home to the foreclosure, I ended up moving in a still decent neighborhood. And um, we ended up paying like it was probably, we ended up getting up about twelve or $14,000. Wow. Okay. Mm -hmm. And that was in what area? In, in the right mark? Over in what area is that called? Like over by, over on the other side of Grandma subdivision area, that area. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I mean, that's a decent area. It, it, so, it is. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. And what is that? How, I mean, I'm assuming you still have that. Is that right? Yes, I do. I still have that home. So what is that renting out right now? Well, so that's my primary home now. So eventually I would like oh, to move. Okay. Yes. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Awesome. And so that's your primary home. You got it for seven, 17,000, right? 12, 12, 12,000. 12, 12,000. Yes. And just imagine like paying cash for 12, 12 or 14,000. Now you don't really have a mortgage and everything is going, how much work did you have to put into the property? We really didn't have to put a whole lot of work into it. Um, we might've put it like 20,000. Wow. I'm going to tell mm -hmm. you right now, these California people out there, if you're watching this, <laughs> like you spend more of it, more on Starbucks coffee in a year than you do what she just paid for her primary residence. So, mm -hmm. That's crazy. So yeah, no, it's crazy. <laughs> that, that's nuts. That's honestly, that's more than what like uh, the cost of me replacing my roof. <laughs> Absolutely. And so. The funny thing about it too, if I kind of been in a better position, I probably, I damn near could have at least purchased four other of uh, five other homes on that block. Like one of the okay. homes next to me is like running um, 7,000. Wow. Mm -hmm. Now, what time? What time was this? Was this during the two thousand eight 
2009. About, uh-huh, about that, uh-huh. Okay. So yeah, I, I understand why then, okay? Because, you know, banks were real. You know, my mom bought a, a house in Hazel Park. Mm-hmm. And she bought it on a foreclosure in 2009. Or not on, on a short sale. She paid $45,000 for it. She got a mortgage for it and everything. And that house right now is probably, she can easily sell that for probably 150. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, and that's just her living in it. So, <laughs> <you know? laughs> but um, with that being said, so, you know, so that's your best deal. What, what would you recommend to new people coming out through all the mistakes that you've had? Okay. We get a lot of new people who's just looking to invest. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, Whether they're out of state, whether they're not, whether they're in state and they're just looking, okay, where can I park some money for my day job or whatever, my savings. Otherwise it's just sitting in an account doing nothing. Um, You know, what would you, what would you suggest to them? So I would suggest, especially if you are coming from out of town, different states, you mm-hmm. definitely should find somebody here that you can trust. Um, oftentimes, people coming from out of town, they trust some of these contractors and the mm-hmm. contractor is half doing what they say they're gonna do. You definitely need to have somebody check up on the contractors. Do not yes. send any money down here unless you know they're doing what they're doing, supposed to be doing. Because um, yes. a lot of contractors or investors have got scammed that way. Um, and matter of fact, we have an office in Southfield, and if anybody want here listening from out of town and need some assistance, I'm one of the ones that they call boots on the ground. So you definitely can call our office and we kind of can help assist with that if you want somebody that you could trust and go by and check to make sure the contract is doing what they say they're going to be doing and not um, if you mm-hmm. gave them X, Y, and Z and they're doing and supposed to be doing quality work, you definitely want to make sure you have somebody to um, check behind them. Um, yeah, and, this, is uh, Tra- this is Tracy Belinda. She said that's exactly what she's looking for, boots on the ground. <laughs> and honestly, like I've spoken with you before, Tracy, you got to build your team no matter what. And she just offered a, you know, she has a place in Southfield that she can be your boots on the ground. So mm-hmm. you can do that. You can contact her, contact me by all means. We'll, we'll ask you at the end of the show how people can contact you. Um, so stick around to the end of the show and we'll, we'll have that. Um, but yeah, that's awesome. So you do boots on the ground for people out of state? I do. I do. Okay. And I love, I, love, I love what I do. I have a passion for it. Um, I'm kind of like the project manager on a um, land bank house um, that okay. we've been working on. And so, um, and even my last project that I worked on, you have to have somebody that's kind of, that's very knowledgeable and going to make sure, go in to check to make sure the contracts are doing what they're supposed to be doing. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, being fair and it's really yep. a situation for everybody. Most definitely. And mm-hmm. she just said she's coming to Detroit in July. Tracy, get a hold of one of us when you get here. I'm happy to, you know, we'll have, be happy to take you out to lunch, take you out to dinner, whatever it is, and see where we can help you out. So um, both of us, either of us, it's up to you. So i um, happy to meet you and uh, kind of go from there. But now with that, that, that's really cool that you like to do that for people. Um, I'm kind of the same way, but I... Um, I strictly wholesale at the moment. So I'm okay. wholesaling with, uh, I get a lot of properties or I work with a lot of people that get a lot of properties in Detroit and I come across a lot of them and I do know the areas in Detroit and, and look at the different prices and things like that. Usually I try not to overprice them or if I do post them, they may be if like they may be on the, on the borderline. But okay. we, we gotta try to we gotta try to squeeze every dollar we can out of them. So, you know, unfortunately, <laughs> but they still gotta be a good deal. No matter what, you know, no matter what you price it at, always still try to run your numbers the way you want to run your numbers. That's what I tell all my buyers, no matter what.
There was once a day that I would pray for you I'd go and misbehave just so you'd notice too Sneaking looks up and down from across the room